is possible to exercise uh, our right to be left alone uh, if we use internet at all? It is actually not the right to be left alone, but only the right to be let alone. <laughs> there is a slight difference between these two. And in general, I think um, it is possible, but it depends on what we understand as the right to be let alone. And uh, this is massively changing. And one change is how people understand their private sphere. And the other thing is the players uh, on this battlefield of, of protection of privacy. And there is entirely new element because it used to be that people wanted to be let alone with regards to other people, to their neighbors or people, simply some others, or uh, to be let alone by the state. But now there is entirely new class of subjects towards which we would like to be let alone, and that is the service providers, or in general those who dispose with our data. So I think that this is the new element in it. Uh, so when we talk about uh, the data, uh, we understand these data are really uh, collected for numerous reasons and then processed in order, in order to get some results and to run some processes. But these algorithms which are using our data, we know they influence our timeline and so on, but do these algorithms influence our offline lives? Very much, and this is already happening. Uh, anytime when our rights are somewhat processed by some automated means, and uh, one of the examples could be social insurance. So uh, the payments that we receive as um, retirement maintenance, for instance, this is always calculated uh, on a computer. And that is very simple uh, calculation, but there can be more sophisticated ways of processing rights of individuals. Uh, and this is entirely normal because it is more efficient. And um, then it is just, well, normal if the state implements these automated processing of rights instead of manual decision making. But do we see uh, more other forms of uh, use of this online data collected in digital environment going back to us in offline environment? Definitely. There is now an entirely new phenomenon of online dispute resolution. There can be either way of resolving disputes when there is a human judge or human arbitrator that decides. But uh, it is also a growing agenda of these disputes being um, entirely um, automatically decided by some algorithm. And this is just because human decision making uh, becomes too complex and too expensive, most of all. So these automated decision making algorithms, they are providing for a much cheaper solution and very often they provide actually alternative to nothing because if we would get the dispute that is from online world being decided by a human element, it would be so expensive and we would not even like to invest into it because the matter of the dispute could be 20 or 30 dollars. So in this case, um, it offers, if it is algorithmically decided, it is very efficient, very cheap, and it offers us some kind of justice um, that would normally not be available. Interesting. Uh, on the other hand, can you explain? Can you explain us like what, what is the concept of intermediary uh, liability exception, and how this uh, concept of ex exception uh, change uh, internet change the media sphere in particular? The basic concept of intermediary liability is actually not about the liability of intermediaries, because this we already had in the laws of EU member states or worldwide. So um, it is not the question of how the liability of some information intermediary is grounded, but how we limit the liability. And uh, this limitation should provide so for some safeguards for intermediaries so that their business doesn't become too legally risky, so that they know that up to certain threshold they will not be liable for potential illegal acting of their users. So that is the basic idea of the whole law of intermediary liability, to let them free up to certain situation. And that situation technically is a situation when the intermediary learns about the fact that its users 
are doing something illegal. So this is the starting point from which we think about their liability. And this uh, liability exception or limitation, how, how did, did shape shape media sphere and, and change the existing power uh, regarding the dissemination of information? I think it provided incentives for intermediaries to invest into services and to develop these services because if you are somewhat safe from liability for potential illegal acting of users, then it is for you a bit easier to develop the service without that burden of potential legal liability. But now there is um, a kind of shift in this liability because originally we understood it as a liability only in case when you learn about some illegal acting of the users and you do not remove the consequences of that illegal acting. But now we have new approach to the liability. We say that if there is some standard forms of illegal acting of users, then the intermediary has to implement mechanisms how to prevent this. And uh, one of the examples uh, was the Delphi case, when Delphi uh, was not held secondarily liable, but actually primarily liable for illegal, hateful comments uh, of its own users. So do you think that this exception will survive in the next period? Uh, yes, we already have some experience with it, and we already have some case law that somewhat adopted the vague terms of this, these provisions. I think what we already learned is also kind of more precise ways how to interpret, and then this probably will need to be legislated in order mostly to provide for more certainty uh, for the intermediaries, so that the intermediaries are more certain as to the ways in which the liability might apply to them.